things. First of all, as far as the course videos and examples, um, I, I post them. Um, typically, people have been showing up for class, but there's always a chance you might want to rewatch something. Um, just like, you know, your favorite TV show, you might want to watch your favorite episode again. Maybe your favorite lecture you'd want to watch again. Um, I forgot to post the ones from last week until I think over the weekend or maybe Friday or something like that. I also noticed because I, this is a different class because I do the work on my laptop, um, I lost a couple of the examples that we did in class. Um, I posted recreations of those, so I went back and made the changes to it. So if you're watching the lecture, things might be a little bit different just because I recreated it. So I like, might have called a variable a different name or something like that. Don't let that throw you. Uh, in essence, it's the same thing. All right, today, as promised, we're going to look at layout, which, uh, again, I have to confess is something that is not my strong point, but maybe we can learn it together. I was playing around with it uh, since last class, and um, we can look at certain things that we can go and, uh, and do. I'm going to start out. Let me put this on the big screen. Um, first of all, First of all, there are, and this might not be a complete list, I'm just going based off of my notes and some things have changed in Android and, and it's confusing. First thing we have is a linear layout. Some of the examples I made up as opposed to some of the examples that uh, the example that Deedle did. Um, there is also a relative layout. A relative layout is where you position things in relation to other things. So maybe you have something that looks like that with the views. You can put a view down, so you can put A. You can then specify that B is to the left, I'm sorry, right of A. C is to the right of B. D is below A, E is below B, and F is below D. So you, you position things based on their relation to other things on the page. You sort of have to start out with one thing as being like the anchor, right, to say that this goes here. And then you can specify things go in relation to the other ones. There's one thing that's mentioned that, that I haven't worked with, absolute layouts. That sounds like we base things based on very specific pixel locations. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. So we're not going to talk about that. Um, in my research, again, the one thing that I'm a little confused about is some of these, as possible, are deprecated and were replaced by something else. Um, Another one is a table or a grid layout. And I think that was the example that we saw with Deedle, where you essentially line up things in rows and columns. Similar to what you would have 
in on an HTML table. If you think table, think rows and columns. And uh, back in the old days, actually in HTML, that's what we use tables for, is to achieve the layout. Well, we're kind of back to that with Android. And that kind of makes sense in a way because um, if, you, if you study any sort of graphical design, uh, designers love grids. It's organized, you know, it's organized visually a certain way. So even if you're not talking about a table of data, think of just a common web, web page. Maybe you have the logo up here, a banner here, a nav here, and your content going here. Really, that's a two by two grid, all right? Now, we don't use tables for that in HTML. All right. I have to talk. I have to like talk both as a web development teacher and a mobile <laughs> development teacher. We don't do that in web development, right? Because that needlessly restricts ourselves to that design. In Android development, and eh, that might be less uh, of an issue. There's a, a new one that I have, I'm not familiar with at all. It's called a constraint-based layout. That's sort of where you have layouts and you specify conditions <coughs> that this should be equally distant between this and this. And you, you specify like essentially a set of constraints or rules that determine the layout. We're going to start out easy though with the, with the linear layout and then we'll go, we'll probably get into some other layouts. I don't know if we'll do it now or later on in the semester. Um, but I do want to cover some of the common attributes because so you, you can understand you should understand what those attributes are. So let me start off with about the simplest layout, about the simplest application you can have beyond a Hello World app. It is a Hello World app, but we're using two views to display it, one for Hello and one for World. All right. First of all, we know it's in our XML file. Let's look at the layout. All the activity does is it displays this layout that says Hello World. So we've seen the activity before. The only difference is the layout is different. This is a linear layout. All right. The two attributes on the linear layout are uh, the Android layout width and layout height. And it says match parent. That means make it as big as the parent is. And in this case, this particular XML file relates to, is the content's main view. So the parent is the device itself. So the, this view, this linear layout, is going to take up the entire screen because it's the main content view for this activity. Set the content view. So that's what match parent means. Make it as big as the parent. In this case, the whole screen is the parent, so it's the whole screen. We have two text views. And the layout height and layout width of these are set to wrap content, as is this. In fact, the only thing different from this is one gets the, one gets the text from the hello string, one gets the text from the world st uh, string. And we use the background color from our colors file from two different places. All right. One, we use at color, color primary dark, and the other one we use color accent. Those are defined in our resource colors file. I define the color name of primary dark, and that's this one. Color name of color accent, that's this one. What's nice about this, again, is remember, 
all of these resource files that we're looking at, so any of these things here, along with the layout, we can add resource qualifiers to. What are resource qualifiers? They are special conditions where a different version of that file will take place. We saw one example of a resource qualifier last week with our strings XML file. We had a strings XML file and a French version of the strings XML file. By the way, I forgot we changed my, uh, the, the, the emulator to French. When I turned it on today, it's like, sacre bleu, what is this? I cannot read this screen, you know? So I had to switch it back to English. All right, at any rate, keep in mind language is only one of the things. We can actually create a different layout if uh, it's oriented horizontally versus vertically. We can create a different layout for a big screen. So if we know we have a tablet that's above a certain dimension, we can create a different layout for it. Those resource qualifiers mean des describing when these resource files are used, and they can be used under a whole range of different possibilities, not just uh, the language. The language is just a nice, quick and easy one to, that I can show, but other ones, and again, we'll do those throughout the semester. All right. I could, for example, have a different color scheme for um, the night view of this. You know, Android phones have a night mode, so you could make it a, a higher contrast so it's more, more readable. All right. Um, you could do this for different countries. Again, you know, if you really get into the, the cultural things of countries, con certain colors have certain uh, connotations. So maybe for your application, you want to use colors. If you're doing an application for a wedding planner, for example, you know, in the U.S., there's typical colors associated with a wedding. In other countries, there's different colors associated with a wedding. So maybe you'd want to make a, uh, a color scheme different for... Um, different cultures, and so on. So that's the only two differences between these, is the background color and the strings that it come from. The layout width and height means, uh, says wrap content. Let's look at the screen. Again, this takes up the whole view, right? It takes up the whole screen, because this activity is the main content view, so it's going to take up the whole screen. Hello world, we can see it with a different colors. I hope you can see that it says hello. It does. All right. Um, if I wanted to change that, I could just change the color in the color file. Notice how big each of these text areas are, or text views are. They're as big as they need to be. All right. That is what wrap content means. Wrap content means that you should make this control as big as it needs to be to hold the content. All right. What is the opposite of wrap content? Not the opposite, I guess, but another option for this is I can say match parent. Let's see what happens if we change that. I'm going to change all of these to match parent. Oh, that was stupid. Pasted instead of copied. If I change these to match parent, We get hello being gigantic and world not fitting in. Ooh, why is that? What does match parent mean? In this case, match the size of the layout. Match the size of the entire layout. All right. Match the size that is available to you. Match the size, what match parent literally means is match the size of your parent, that is the view that contains you. Now, in this case, the view that contains these controls is the linear layout. If, so 
what I'm saying here is give all the space, match the size of the linear layout for hello and for world. Now, can I scroll that? I don't know. All right. One thing that I didn't talk about that we will talk about, um, like later on, you know, in a bit, um, is that we can use layouts within layouts. All right. An example for that would be um, we could use a horizontal layout within a vertical layout. So we could have things, we could have the whole screen as a vertical layout and make sections of the screen have a horizontal layout. You might do that so you could have labels next to uh, text view, uh, 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 edit text uh, views. All right, so the label and the view. The whole screen could be one vertical layout where you have your first item, your second item, your third item. But each item on the list will be a horizontal layout that will contain a label and a text field, a label and a text field, a label and a text field. We should get to that example today. All right, keep in mind that I'm not going to cover everything about layouts um, because if you look, there's, an, there's a whole bunch of stuff about layouts. But I do want to give you sort of a fighting chance so that you can do the assignments. All right. So I could do this. I could make the height be match parent and may I make the width wrap content. Think in your mind, I guess your mind is the best place to do your thinking, but think in your mind what you think this will look like. I'm not going to ask for an answer, but just think. If I make the width wrap content, knowing that the wrap content is making, it says make it as big as the content is. So I have wrap content on the horizontal, uh, the width, and a match parent on the height. So let's go and run this. we get hello world and it's side by side. Why is that? Well, the vertical we said make as big as a parent. So boop, makes it as big as a parent. The width we say make as big as it needs to be. So as big as it needs to be is to fit that content. And so hello takes up this space, world takes up that space. Okay, questions about that? What, we come, what can we tell about this um, that the default for um, linear layouts is? Are they by default oriented horizontally or vertically? Horizontally. By default, they're, they're, they're oriented horizontally. All right, so how do we change that? Well, there's an attribute for that. Orientation equals vertical. This is a good way to learn it, is to play these what if games. What if I change this? What's going to happen? What is a good, what, what if I change that? That will happen. I also think, as I was going through this example, I decided to just make a separate app to play with this. Um, simply because uh, if you have a re real app with a lot of stuff going on, it's hard to tell what all's going on. If you make a very simple app, you can resize the controls and play with the controls and make them the size that you want. All right, so I've now made it oriented vertically, and the width is still wrapped content, but the height is matched parent. How do you think this is going to look? Again, think in your mind what this is going to look like. Same thing, right? Because it's oriented vertically, and I said the, ver the, the height is match parent. This guy takes up all the space and doesn't leave any space for this one. Um, 
horizontal, though, it only takes up what it needs. What you see a lot is something like this. If this is a vertical layout, I'm going to say the width match parent and the height wrap content. So I'm going to switch these around. And that will give us two stripes with that in there. All right, questions about any of this? What are, what are other options for height? Well, we could hard code a value in. All right. So I could make the width be 50 DP or DIP. Both of them are used synonymously. I think both of them will work. Let me verify that. All right. That made it 50 DIP. What does DIP mean? And why do we use DIP instead of pixels? Yes. the same size on density screens. Density independent pixels is what uh, DIP stands for. And I think DP would work as well. All right, Which means if we change the screen density of this, it would be the same size. All right. Now is probably a good a time as any is to talk about DIP and pixels. All right. I'm going to draw on the board for this. Because it's important to understand this. The biggest mental block I had when I first learned this is thinking this related to the screen size. It doesn't relate to the screen size, it relates to the density of the pixels. How would you describe a screen that had a higher density of pixels? How would that compare to a screen that had lesser density of pixels? Pardon me? <laughs> yeah, more expensive, so probably better quality, right? It's going to look better, all right? And again, why is that? Well, what are pixels? They're little dots that together make up images and text and all that kind of stuff. So the closer they are together, the more it looks like a continuous line, and, and, and it's, it's sharper, right? So I'm going to really over-exaggerate this. Let's say I had a screen with a low density pixels. Ten by ten. I'm not going to draw all hundred of them in. That might be how a low density pixel, a ten by ten square, would be. All right. And if you'd rather think of those as being each, those each of those being ten pixels, so that'd be a hundred by hundred, let's say. Now imagine on a higher density one. That's also 10 by 10. If I were to display using pixels, all right, if I were to display something, an image or a, a block for uh, an input or, or something like that, anything, if I were to display anything and I said it would be 
uh, uh, 10 by 10 square, 10 pixels, 10 pixels height, 10 pixels width. All right. On assuming that these are the same size devices with just a different screen density, it would look gigantic on the lower density and it would look tiny on the high density. We want it to look uniform across. So how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to take up more pixels if it's high density. All right? So let me look up what some common screen densities are. All right, there are six, um, there are six uh, levels of screen densities. Low density. Medium, high. Extra high. Extra, extra high. And extra, extra, extra high. They didn't really think through these categories when they first made medium and high, right? That like things are only going to get bigger and bigger and, and better. So pretty soon we'll have like 26 X's and high and, you know, and all that. So this is 120 pixels per inch. This is 160 if I'm not mistaken, yes. High is 240 if I'm not mistaken. Extra high is 320, 480, and 640. Now, there's a conversion. The assumption is, at least it used to be, that medium density was considered sort of the benchmark. Google that real quick to see if it changed. It, it, it is. So, and this is something that I'm going through the calculation. It's not like you do this calculation a lot, but you should have a sense of it. All right? If I wanted a hundred by a hundred pixel to display on all devices, so all devices I wanted to make it look like a hundred by a hundred pixels, the standard or the, the, what would you say, benchmark, uh, the reference point is medium. So, 100 DPI, 100 uh, DIP would be on a medium density, 100. To get the DPI, 
or to get the, 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 the actual pixel size, you would multiply by this over the density. So, uh, or I'm sorry, the other way around, this over that. So for 120 over 160 is what? Three-fourths. So three-fourths times 100, this would actually make the image 75 pixels on that. On the on the, the 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 low density one. Two forty time over one sixty is that's equal to three over two times a hundred. So that'd be hundred fifty. So that's how Android will figure out how many pixels to actually make the thing, based on that. The bottom line, the takeaway of this, all right, is that you want to use DIP to account for this difference. Because you're going to have a size in mind, and you don't want it getting tiny in a high-density device and gigantic on a, on a low-density device. There's actually a number of calculators and charts that show this in greater detail. assumes that you have a 48 pixel image and the, ba the benchmark is, is uh, medium density. The low density version will be 36 pixels. TV DPI, I wasn't aware of that density, but I guess there's another one, um, would be 63.9. Uh, uh, HDPI, high density, would be 72 pixels, 96, 144, 192. They then prove to you that this is the same size by doing a calculation. All of these would make an image or a, a text box or whatever that's 0.3 inches big. All right? So that sort of proves to you um, that. Uh, the one thing that, that you will um, do as well is, um, this is also true with icons. When we start to get to make icons for our applications, you'll have several versions of the icons because you don't want to have a tiny little icon uh, for a high density uh, device and a great big old icon for a, uh, a larger device or a, a lower density pixel device. All right. There's something called gravity and padding. Let's talk about padding first. I can give a pop a padding left equals 100 dp or dip. Padding bottom. I'm sorry, I want to do padding top. We'll make 50 dp. So when I run this, notice that this is now. 100 over from the left and 50 over from the top. Let's make those a little smaller. So 
five from the top, ten from the left. Another thing that we have is gravity. When you think of gravity, um, the reason that this was chosen, this particular word, um, is that when you think of gravity, gravity pulls you in a certain direction, right? We're all pulled to the center of the earth, right? We're all pulled to the center of the earth. All right. Why don't we just fall through to the center of the earth then? Something's in the way. <laughs> All right. The building, the ground, uh, whatever is there is in the way. So we're being pulled there, but we can't make it to the center of the earth. It's a similar thing with Android and the gravity. You're going to be, you can pull your views in a certain direction, but if there's something in the way, it's not going to go all the way there. For example, if I tried to center something, I can't center both things right smack dab here. So let's go in and let's put Android gravity equals center. Now when I run this, Interesting. What if the padding works? It's getting in the way. I think what's happening is you're setting the gravity for the layout. Try that. Probably a good, uh, good thing. I swear I had it up there earlier, though. Let's try this. This is weird. Somehow, thanks. Let's do this. Let's make all these. So make all these uh, wrap content.
try those. Uh, horizontal. Might have had something else on the individuals too, and I just thought that you know, there helped. Then we'll try layout gravity, and then we'll give up. to do some research on that. The one thing I do want to get to you, though, is how I could put things, more than one control, I could have a vertical linear layout that contains multiple horizontal linear layouts. What that would allow me to do is, and I'll draw way over on this side of the board, What that would allow me to do is my overall layout would be block stacked horizontally, or I'm sorry, vertically. Within each one, though, I have a layout of things that are stacked horizontally. So overall, the big groups are stacked vertically. Inside each group, it's stacked horizontally. So let me go and we'll make... If I do this, I'm going to change both of these. I have the color accent simply because that's easier to see. I do this without having that second layout. I'm going to get these all stacked vertically on top of each other. So I'm going to have label, edit text, label, edit text, label, edit text. Label is the edit text. Why can't I get in there? Ah. Why can't I get in there to enter anything? What I say the size was. I said it's wrapped content. How big is the content? Ain't got no content. <laughs> so let's make the width 50 DIP. Now if we look, there's the edit text field. We still can't get in it. All right. Well, let's go and look. I'm going to look edit text Android XML properties. And it will show me somewhere in here the XML properties are available for it.
and inherit some from text view. So let's see what the text view has for XML properties. All right, it has length. Let's try putting that in there. This is how many characters it can hold. Let's say this guy can hold 10. And you need to specify that Um, I, I, um, I, I could set the text property to, to some dummy text to be like the, 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 the note that says that. We'll do that um, in a second to show that. I can also say what kind of data goes into that field, if it's numbers or, or whatever. Let's get the size working first, and then we'll do that. think you would on an edit text, but maybe there is an editable option. I don't recall ever seeing that one before. Um, I think it would just be on by default. By default, yeah. Um, that is a good question. If set specifies as an input method. have to do this either because I think it would know based on the fact that it's an edit text field. I'll tell you what, we'll skip that part of it and instead I will create the horizontal view, horizontal layout. do it for one of them in the interest of time and we'll come back and we'll do the other one later. So hello, and then world. Uh, the, the text box is next to it. I only did it for that one. We'll come back and clean up some of these loose ends uh, next time about entering into that and the gravity part, and then go on to play more uh, with the layout and look at some of the other layouts. We'll do that um, next time. 
I'll also ask you for next time um, for anything that you are confused about. Um, I do this periodically throughout the semester. I'll ask for one thing that you're clear about, one thing that you're confused about, and then we spend some time reviewing the things that you're confused about. So think about that between now and then. Um, so we'll at least do gravity, figure out why the edit text isn't working, and possibly do some more properties, possibly do some more layout options, and then what's clear, what isn't clear. We'll do that sort of review. I think now's a good time to do that. All right, that's all I had for today. Um, we'll see you later. Is anyone going to laugh?